happy to get Tuesday. Welcome into our new Sports First set. You guys have asked for a winter edition of Sports First, and so we have answered. We have our lovely snowy background here in uh, our Miami studios. Oh, it's nice. And a ton of festive stuff. We'll get more as, as the week goes on, but yeah, it, it definitely feels doesn't. Nice. Yeah, but it definitely does not look like this outside. No, definitely no, not. Uh, Still getting used to the there. Christmas in Miami. I know, it is a bit weird, but let us know how the weather is where you guys are watching. And on our agenda today, Two words, Champions League. It is back. The final match day of the year is upon us. And so we're going to break down the big matches of the day, including a big one for Liverpool and our man, Jesse Marsh. Hashtag USA. All this on Sports First. That starts now. Uh, let's hit the comments before we uh, talk about this Liverpool match. Uh, Mo Sadi, nice decor. Yes. Marvin Hidalgo saying good morning, guys. Good morning, Marvin. Greg Garcia, hello, people. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jose de Leon, winter is here. Exactly. Winter was coming, and now it is here. Mo Sadi also saying hello, soccer heads. A nice shout out to you. Oh, I like that. I'm Ruta Bahati, the Ice Age sports verse. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I actually wore this jacket because it looks like icicles. You know, uh, it is a lie, but whatever. Um, Mosadi also saying hello, soccer heads, or should I say, Mr. Problematic? And oh, speaking, not today. Yeah, mm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep the problematic count. Um, but anyway, it could be a problematic day for Liverpool if they cannot get a result uh, against a Salzburg side that have kind of been the revelation of this Champions League yeah. stage, I would say. I think so, especially after that game at Anfield where. They almost overturned a 3 0 deficit. They right. ended up losing 4 3 in the end. Oh no, bear down, bear, bear down. down. Um, there you go. But, but uh, yeah, so th this, this is going to be a tough one. Just like last season, Liverpool in a do or die situation in the last game of the group. But we all know how it ended up. Um, Ryan Moran saying, nice set, waiting for someone to complain about seeing the same soccer balls. I came for the football top talk. Woo woo. Yeah, and we have to People keep the soccer balls about all the time. No, no, no. he's he's he's, 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 he's sarcastic. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, okay, so back Salzburg taking on Ant, uh, on Liverpool, of course. Like you said, four three result at Anfield. For those of you that may have forgotten, um, Liverpool has actually qualified on the last match day, the past two Champions League editions of the Champions League. So. This isn't anything new for Liverpool fans who have had to wait until match day six to know if they qualify. But just like we said, uh, they need a result. They need a win. Um, even a draw if it ends, let's say, in a 3-3 draw thriller. We'll see Salzburg go through if Napoli get the result. Yeah. It's, it's, I, <coughs> I, I, I'm I coughing. I'm to, so excited. I want this to happen so badly. Not only because I, I want to see a different team reach the knockout stages. In fact... Salzburg have not reached the knockout stages yet right. uh, in their history. So the fact that it could be an American taking them through after beating the European, the reigning European champions, what a story that would be. And let's see what you guys are saying um, in the comment section here. Brendan Burns, I love how Haaland goes. We will win 3-1 and I'll have all three. So yes, Erling Haaland, uh, speaking of revelations of this Champions League group stage, he has absolutely been one. Sensational. His numbers are ridiculous. He has eight goals in the five previous Champions League matches. He scored in every single one. And he, when he was asked to give a prediction for this match, he said, I'm going to score a hat trick and we're going to win. I love that because 19 we, years old. We know that players who become big time players have an outrageous confidence about them. And this is a guy who is just has confidence oozing through right. his veins. So that sort of attitude I think is infectious for the rest of the teammates. They understand given what happened at Anfield that there is a real possibility here to make history in a very big way. And Liverpool don't have the best record away from home in the Champions League. Right. So this there seem to be a lot of of, uh, of things, a lot of variables uh, in favor of Salzburg for this game. So it's going to be a partidazo, as you like to say. And by the way, another sort of subplot here is that Nabi Keita and Sadio Mane are returning to the club, to the stadium that propelled them to stardom. Right. So um, it, it's going to be really interesting to see. And, and a young crop of African players 
at Salzburg who have a real opportunity also to make a name for themselves. Uh, Mohamed Bassam saying Holland shouldn't get too cocky so early in his career. I don't I don't mind it. I like it like this. I do too. Because it's not disrespectful. No, no, it's it's playful and honestly, he has the right to say that. He has scored uh like I said in every single match in this edition of the Champions League and against big teams like Liverpool, like Napoli obviously. So, um I mean, I think he has the right to say it. Marvin saying Liverpool may not be that lucky this time around. And let's talk about the man who is hoping to make this miracle happen, Jesse Marsh. Like you said, his work at Salzburg has been unbelievable. And he said something really interesting um, this week. He said, at Salzburg, they don't treat me like an American coach. Yeah. Which I thought was really revealing. Yeah, well, and, and I wonder if that comes from the fact that the Austrian Bundesliga isn't taken very seriously as one of the uh, top leagues in Europe, and it, and it isn't. Right. And I think for that reason, sort of chip on the shoulder, this is a guy who's one of us. He's a guy who probably does not get the respect. Hush your mouth, Eric. <laughs> who doesn't? Who probably doesn't? A Liverpool fan there, Rain Meadows. Rain uh, Meadows. Who does, Team Rain Meadows. <laughs> he, he probably wouldn't get the respect because he's American. And in fact, I think it needs to be noted that when he came to uh, to Salzburg, his signing wasn't exactly, his arrival wasn't welcomed warmly. Interesting. But he soon, soon turned things around and now he's a superstar uh, in Salzburg. So I think this is great for him. I've been saying it for a very long time. I covered uh, Jesse Marsh very closely in New York when I was on the Red Bulls beat. I think he's a terrific guy. I think he's a really good manager. And one of the things that really stands out is that his players Love him. Uh, yeah, and you could see that in his dressing room talks that have yeah. kind of leaked um, during this Champions League group stage. It's very impressive. Anthony Romeo saying Liverpool has to be careful because their focus is to win the Premier League. And they are doing so well in the Premier League, but we get to this point in the season and your depth is really tested because you're competing on all fronts. And in Liverpool's case, all three fronts. Yeah, but a welcome return to Nabi Keita, right. who has been injured a lot. Uh, he was a player, I think, that Jurgen Klopp when he signed him and he waited an extra year for him to finish his time at, uh, at RB Leipzig, he was a player who I think he expected to be a big part of that triangle in the midfield. It hasn't panned out that way, but the fact that he's back from injury, especially with Fabinho going down injured, I think is, is uh, really good news. And let's talk about the other two teams in this group. Um, Napoli taking on Genk. Uh, and an interesting situation unfolding at Napoli. Uh, reports coming out of Italy and really all around Europe say that uh, Carlo Ancelotti will step down uh, after this match, regardless of the result. So win, loss, or draw, he will uh, leave his position as Napoli manager, opening the doors to a couple of other jobs in Europe. But let's focus first and foremost on the situation at Napoli. A really sad situation that has gone from bad to ugly to worse. Yeah, untenable situation. And... Just to your point about it being sad, when Ancelotti took over for Sarri, there was a lot of concern as to whether Ancelotti would be able to continue that really good project with Napoli playing some of the most attractive attacking football in Europe. He did exactly that. Even when he changed the tactics, they still right. played that same sort of fluid football. So the hope was that with his signings this season, things would only get better. That has not come to fruition. They're actually, what, sixth or seventh, uh, having a really seventh, tough time of yeah. it. Um, but the problem began because Ancelotti was caught in between De Laurentiis, the president, and the players. De Laurentiis wanted to basically kidnap the players because he didn't think that they were performing well enough. Ancelotti sided with the players, right. and that turned De Laurentiis against him. But he didn't do it in a way that the players really liked, so the players weren't with Ancelotti. It's been a really bad situation for a guy who's known to be a very good diplomat uh, with the players and with club presidents. He got along pretty well with with uh, Perez at, at oh, Real Madrid yeah. so and throughout his career yeah but he'll he'll land on his feet and hopefully at Arsenal at so I can win a coffee from Mike Fuentes um Luis Martin saying first Napoli and second Salzburg wow wow we wow it's gonna be really interesting to see how this group plays out Andres Pickle Timmons saying give Gattuso back to Milan and speaking of Gattuso, Gattuso is in line to take over uh for Carlo Ancelotti at Napoli once Carlo Ancelotti steps down a really, I don't know, an intriguing uh, appointment if that does eventually happen because Gattuso, known to be kind of a hard, yeah. tough manager coming yeah. from Carlo Ancelotti, who is not that. Right, a player's manager. Right, and a Gattuso who didn't really have success in Milan, so... Well, I, maybe that's... Uh, yes and no. I think it might be a little bit harsh because okay. I think he did end up doing better, especially if we look at how Milan is doing right now. Right. And they're on their second manager. Um... 
I think he did reasonably well, and this is a guy who didn't really have real head coaching experience. And you're absolutely right, Gab. He's coming into Napoli because he's known for having for ruling with an iron fist. But I'm not sure that's going to go too well, considering the situation that Napoli find themselves in. Not that the players won't welcome him. He just has to walk very carefully and make sure that he doesn't go in there barking orders at everybody when this is a team that needs a different approach, a little bit of a massage, somebody who's on their side, uh, somebody who's going to protect them, I think, create a buffer between them and the president. Um, and Richard Murray saying, did anyone try to get a reality TV show inside the Napoli dressing room? That would be an yeah, interesting Amazon, one. Yeah, Amazon. Like, I mean, I, they hit the jackpot with Tottenham, but Napoli would have been equally as good. Absolutely. Um, and speaking back to Carlo Ancelotti now, if he leaves Napoli, top European jobs available yeah. for him to take over. Uh, Everton, and the big one, Arsenal. Yeah, and you can even uh, add Manchester, Manchester United. United. Manchester well, United to yeah. that. I know that everybody expects Pochettino to go there. But I don't know. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer bought himself some time. I think he bought himself until the end of the season, which is something that right. I've been saying. You and I discussed this, that Pochettino announcing that he was ready to return was, was weird because he right. will have a lot of options available to him. Although, apparently, reportedly, Bayern Munich have said that Pochettino is not one of their targets. Now, whether that happened because Pochettino said, I'm not no, interested in going. No, thank you. Yeah, no, right. thank you. And they want to say face. We'll, we'll find out, Byron maybe. Did, Byron didn't want to coach they scored seven on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know what? You say that as a joke, but yeah, but you right. never know. So where could you see Carlo Ancelotti fitting best? I think he'd fit gr really well at, at, at Arsenal. I think he'd also fit quite well at Manchester United. Herito uh, Amaya. Fingers crossed on Ancelotti to Man United. Um, but Arsenal apparently snubbed Ancelotti over the summer when Ancelotti was available, decided to go with Unai Emery. Well, so he, was he, was he was at Napoli. He no, but before that. Before that. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, look, I think this is different cir circumstances. I'm sure that Son Leahy, who's in charge of football there at, at Arsenal, will have a lot of lunches, expensive lunches with a lot of managers. And Ancelotti loves to be wined and dined. I think he's certainly going to be one of them. But at Manchester United really should take a look at this guy. We'll sh see how this one plays And out. I have my reservations about Ancelotti, but... I, th Why? I think he'd fit. I, I, I question his tactical decisions some, sometimes. The man who brought the coveted La Decima to Real yeah. Madrid. I mean, listen, you can't criticize his recent work, that's for sure. So. Ancelotti to enter Miami. Gerito and uh, Amaya saying Ancelotti and Ronaldo to Man U in the summer. Wow. Interesting. Can't see that one happening, but um, okay, we'll move on. Uh, Chelsea taking on Lille and Ajax versus Valencia in another tightly contested group. Um, Chelsea with a win, have to hope that Valencia draw or lose to make it through to the Champions League. Valencia must win, and they guarantee their spot going through. This one's an interesting one, how this one plays out. Yeah, let's start with Ajax Valencia. Valencia are in a situation that they're really uncomfortable with, which is they need to win this game. And they're a team that like to sit back, absorb attacks, and then try and hit on the counter, um, and wh which where they've been effective. They were this weekend against Levante, for example, doing right. exactly that. I'm not sure if they're well-equipped to take the game consistently to Ajax hmm. at the Amsterdam Arena, even though Ajax lost this weekend to Willem Sve, uh, which was a big loss, big win for William II, as uh, people in the English world like to, like to call them. I think Ajax uh, wins uh, this game. Really? Yeah, and I think I think that Lille go into Stamford Bridge without any pressure on their shoulders. Renato Sanchez, by the way, doing very well in the last in the last two games. Victor Rossiman, one of the most exciting attacking talents in European football right now. But Chelsea get the point they need, and Valencia loses at Ajax. Wow, and uh, that that's tough for Valencia. Valencia side who came back in so in such exciting fashion in the two-all draw against yeah. Dortmund in the last round of the yeah. Champions League. Would be sad to see them go down to the Europa League. Um, we'll see how that one plays out. And then the big one, a lot of you already asking in our comment section about Barcelona who make the trip to Milan to take on Inter Milan and then Dortmund playing Slavia Prague. Uh, the big news in this Barcelona lineup is that there will be no Messi and no Pique, both rested for this one. Neto will be starting in goal in this first competitive match for Barcelona. So that's another little storyline. Someone asking uh, is Ansu Fati going to start uh, in place of Messi? Well, he's, Some people saying. Uh, he's got, he, he picked up a knock, didn't he? No, I think he's, he's, he's back. He's in the squad, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, yeah, uh, well, Dembele's not playing. Right. Uh, chances are Griezmann is in the squad, So, but whether yes. he starts, that's the question. 
Uh, probably I probably will start. I think he will. I, he will start. Look, if I'm Dortmund, I'm uh, I'm looking at this and I'm very annoyed because you think that Inter Milan have a huge advantage right. over here. Uh, and I think Inter Milan are going to pull this off. Really? I, I really do. Lautaro Martinez is, is, is going to run that back line ragged. So if that does happen, um, Barcelona are obviously booked their ticket through. Um, Inter and Dortmund fighting for that second place spot, both tied on seven points. So you think Inter are going to do it? Yeah, and I think Dortmund are going to do it against Slavia Prague at but home. But not enough. But not enough. They right. have the, you know, the one, the game that's going to make the difference is the one at Signal Iduna Park when Dortmund weren't able to beat uh, Barcelona. Although that penalty should have been reviewed because Ter Stegen was off his line uh, when Royce hit it. Uh, yeah, they had a big win ag against uh, Dusseldorf, 5 0 this weekend, probably mm -hmm. their most impress impressive performance. I think this carries on against Slavia Prague, who who are repeating their 11. They play a very up-tempo football, which we saw at the Camp Now. We saw it at the Giuseppe Miazza. Dortmund win it, but just not enough, as you said. Um, uh, Brendan Burns saying, go Dortmund. If they don't advance, they'll win the other tournament, the other tournament being the Europa League. Who do you think are favorites? I think Dortmund is a very good shot for, yeah. the, uh, for the Europa League. I just, you know, they're Jekyll and Hyde with Lucien Favre. Doing really well in the beginning of the season, saying that they are categorically title contenders and then everything going to to poopy you know losing losing at, going to poopy going to poopy losing that at talk. Uh, that talk. Talk, yeah. uh losing at the alliance I, I just don't know what to make of this team but when they are clicking when they're playing aggressively they're one of the best teams in europe but the but the 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 issue is not the problem uh the issue is that they don't often play aggressively that is problematic uh, Bavon Gray saying, I don't understand you guys thinking that Barca is beating anyone without Messi. Let's just see the game. The fa Let's just see faster the game. Yeah, I guess. He thinks the game is going to be faster if Messi's not there. Oh, if Messi is not there. Someone else saying that uh, Inter are going to win because Messi's not there. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how this Barcelona side fares without Messi, but Pique is also another big yeah. absence for them. Yeah. That might uh, not, Ter Stegen. That yeah, but you know, it's, it's no, well, it I think is. that's, I think that's a, a, a bit harsh because Look, he's not had a great season. No, PK. but he didn't have a great one last year. But it's his presence, I think. His presence, else. and I think <clears throat> that this is an opportunity for Longley and Umtiti to play uh, again. Although, interestingly, Umtiti will play are, uh, probably on the right side of that center back mm -hmm. duo. He's a left-footed player. He doesn't look very comfortable there. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, everyone sending in their predictions. Fabian Cardellino, Inter 2, Barca 3, Fati Suarez, and Greasy score. Wow, that's a wow. high-scoring game. Um, Andres Bickle Timmons, they need an actual backup in under nine. Paco being out has been part of the problem, referring to Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund. Um, Amrita Bahati, if Slavia hold Dortmund, they would have three draw against Europe's biggest club. I would yeah. love to see that for them. And they knocked out Sevilla in the Europa League last year in what was an incredible game. It was the end of Pablo Machin's reign at uh -huh. Sevilla. Uh, Bavon Gray, Barca 2, Inter 1, Ryan Moran, I'm extremely anxious to see more Umtiti. And we haven't seen Umtiti consistent because of his injuries this season, but he, I mean, he is a very good center back. Yeah, I, what, just two years ago, right. I put him in the list of top center backs under 23, and he was my number two. I think Laporte was my number one. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. The knee injury was an issue. Um, the, the way he treated the knee caused some friction with with the brass at, at Barcelona. Yeah, I don't know I, I don't know what the future holds for for Umtiti. It, it, is Tobido? I didn't see this Tobido in the in the in the list. Yes, he is. He, is? he could start. I saw him Barca is going to win cuz we are going to have a better defense with Umtiti and Pablo. Yeah, yeah. that that which would be that interesting. That could be a really interesting duo right there. Uh, Luis Martin El Clasico for the Champions League final 2020 and from what you've seen so far, who do you think looks most likely to book their ticket to the Champions League final. I mean, at the beginning of the tournament, before the uh, group stage is over or even begins, you know, you, you have your favorites. But from what you've seen so far, he's predicting a Clasico. I'm not sure Real Madrid made uh, it you, all the way. Look, it you doesn't can, matter. PSG's winning the whole thing. So. Uh, yeah. PSG, I mean, uh, my, I, my prediction of PSG uh, is still stands. I mean, if stands. you saw weekend winners yesterday, you were there. <laughs> so you, I, if they don't take care of this Mbappe situation, and it's not just the Mbappe situation. That's a little bit unfair. But if they don't give Tuchel the backing, if Tuchel doesn't become a little bit more authoritative there, they're not going to win the Champions League. They're just not. When you lose respect for your, for your manager... Tactics, in, to a certain degree, go out the window because right. you're not doing everything that you're asked to do. So I don't think PSG 
I still have my money on Manchester City, especially now What? that they've coughed up the Premier League. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Laporte will come back, uh, and I, I don't think there's a <laughs> I don't think there's a clear favorite this season. I really don't. I, I would agree with you. And and Pep Guardiola, besides PSG, man, he needs. <laughs> besides who? PSG. I th I just I just see PSG as the clear favorite. I'd like to see PSG win it, but. Man City, I think, are going to do it, and it's going to be a Man City Barcelona final. Just because Messi, man, Messi is going to is going to take that team to the promised land this season. And they're going to get over that unfortunate uh, two years in a row choking. Yeah, choking away from home. Let's they're see what you guys are saying in the comp. Yeah, third time's a charm. Yeah. Uh, Richard Murray saying no chance Dortmund will win the Europa League. Dortmund is too soft for the grind. Those Thursday matches will crush them. Interesting. Could do. Um, a lot of people predicting PSG will win it all. Brendan Burns, PSG will win it all. Brendan Burns also saying Bayern PSG final. PSG winner. Wow. High hopes for a Bayern. You know, uh, you know, Bayern has lost two games in a row under Hansi Flick, but both those games they were dominant. Okay. So, it just didn't work out for them. I think Bayern is an interesting shout. And if if they win with Hansi Flick as their manager, what a story that would be in European football. As for the PSG people, so that includes the, the two of you. I'm not sure and about... And everyone about, on our about, Sports First comment right. section. Let me ask you this. Were you... Are you that optimistic after seeing how poorly they played at the Bernabeu against Real Madrid? Because that was... A very damn yeah, but they game. came back the and got a point. You mean the, the oh game? The God. game they got really lucky with Varan oh, messing no, up. I'm sorry, in the Champions. Yeah, you need a little bit of luck though in the yeah, Champions League too. I mean, at they least they had the if it weren't for Keylor Navas, yes, okay. And but, and they, uh, but, but it doesn't signed. matter. But if it weren't for Keylor Navas, they would have lost like five nil. Absolutely, but but for for I mean, you could look at Barcelona. If it wasn't for Ter Stegen, they would have lost. La 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 la. I mean, that's yeah. But the only diff the difference between those two teams. Messi. Messi. Yeah, but that's irrelevant uh, for right now. For the PSG <laughs> Messi, you're irrelevant. So, so, no, for so the so PSG okay conversation. For no, yeah, it's okay for Messi to be on Barcelona, but Navas, it's an issue because it's on PSG. Right. I'm not saying it's okay or not okay. Right. I'm just Ooh, saying. getting so heated on I am first. just Let's saying. See the comment section. Jonathan Quintanilla, today we will find out what Barca is about without Messi and Pique and Ter Stegen. Um, but Messi Dependencia, yeah, it's been a real problem all season long. Yeah. Um, someone else pointing out, and which rightly so, Barcelona beat Inter last season in the Champions League without Messi. So it's nothing they haven't done, but this is a different Inter team. Yes, different Inter team. Uh, and a different, a different Barcelona. A different also. Barcelona. A Barcelona that without Messi right. for seven league games looked terrible, except for the game where they beat Betis at home. Um, Mo Saudi saying, yeah, Gabby, you need luck, but they choke at the final stages, referring to PSG. But Barcelona have choked at the final stages, too. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one plays out. That's an interesting comment from Bassem. Oh, yes, Zabane. I did see that one. Let's, we can touch on this. We have a couple minutes. Um, the PSG are the only team without a solid leader. Thiago Silva is in a leader like Ramos, Messi, and Ronaldo. And uh, honestly, from what we've seen from Tuchel also, he's not the leader all either. And Bappe is not the leader because he's so young. And Neymar certainly is not the leader. Cavani doesn't even play anymore. Icardi is a new guy. Uh, Di Maria is a veteran, but doesn't really have that leader presence either. Ti Tiago Silva is the leader on that team. I think it might be a little harsh saying that he's not a leader like Ramos uh, or Messi and Ronaldo. Messi and Ronaldo are different leaders uh, from Ramos. Ramos is more of the, your prototypical leader. Grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Grab the teammates by the scruff of the neck. Thiago Silva has a little bit of that. But the background issue with him is he hasn't signed a new contract with PSG yet. So that's, that's causing mm. uh, some problems. And how do you rein in the two best paid and most expensive players in the world who are acting petulantly? Mbappe more than, than, than uh, Neymar right now. It's, it's, it's difficult. To hold... Tohol has a real, real issue on his hands. Uh, Bavon Gray saying City will be more motivated to win the UCL. EPL trophy is gone. I, I, I mean, agree. that's a, that's true, but yeah, I, I agree. And and there's and there's has to be some saving face here from Pep Guardiola. Oh, absolutely. Because he's coming. You know, Pep Guardiola, as great as he is, comes up with some lame, lame excuses for things. Two things he does. He says that every opponent he plays is like the best opponent that he's ever played. <laughs> to right? underplay his, himself and his team. Right. And then when things don't go his way, he's like, well, you got this and you got that and da, 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 da. why is he Italian? You know, yeah, I, uh, he's Italian. Well, he played for he played for Brescia. Well, for and he also calls Manchester. 
Manchester City, uh, Bayern Munich, yeah. as of late. So he's just completely losing the plot. Uh, Allah Abu Ghush saying, I don't think there's a clear winner this year, which makes this year's competition really interesting. And yeah. You are spot on. Uh, anything is possible, including Liverpool being knocked out of the Champions League today. Let's go, Jesse Marsh! Woo! So, anyway, but we're not... We're unbiased here on Sports First. We'll just see how this one plays out. I just out. like the underdogs. Yeah. A uh, little reminder that we are eight days away from a midweek edition of El Clasico. Our coverage begins on Sports First next Wednesday at noon, uh, followed by a preview show at 1 o'clock. And then kickoff is at 2. It is going to be Fire! full way, Anyway, uh, we'll see you guys manana. Bye. Ciao, big soccer hats.